to this first content related brain bit by bit, in which I will show images of hypertrophic olivary degeneration. This is a form of transsynaptic degeneration, and it is not only unique because of the hypertrophy, but it can also be used to illustrate the anatomy of the brainstem, to talk a little bit about neurotransmitters, and because there's not only involvement of neurons, but in a later stage also glial cells. If you look at the brainstem on sagittal T1 weighted images, you can divide it in midbrain, pons with pregnant belly, and medulla based on the morphology. On transverse images, you can also recognize the three parts of the brainstem. And to know where you are, you can see if there's connection with the cerebellum. And if there is, you're at the level of the pons. Above that, you're at the level of the midbrain, as in this T2 weighted image, where you can see the substantia nigra anteriorly, the red nucleus as two black eyes on this T2 weighted image, and the ventral tegmental area that is so important in the dopamine circuitries in between. Below the pons, you're at the level of the medulla. Again, no contact with the cerebellum. And anterior in the medulla, there are the medullary pyramids where the corticospinal tracts cross. And just behind that is the inferior olivary nucleus. And if there's denervation of the inferior olivary nucleus, after a few months, it becomes larger and hypertrophied, so every radiology book says don't mistake this for a tumor. This is a rare form of degeneration. And in this patient, they also did a tractography and they seeded the red nucleus. So you can see on the normal left side tracts going to the inferior olivary nucleus, and there are also connections with the dentate nucleus in the cerebellum. So there is a triangle between the red nucleus, central tegmental tract, inferior olivary nucleus, inferior cerebellar peduncle, dentate nucleus, dentate nucleus, superior cerebellar peduncle, red nucleus. And the main neurotransmitter in this guillet moleret triangle is GABA, an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So if the inhibition falls away in the central tegmental tract. There is less inhibitory input in the inferior olivary nucleus and um, the axons from the central tegmental tract make contact with the dendrites in the inferior olivary nucleus that also have dendrodendritic junctions. Then there is an increase in dendrites and dendritic spines and eventually the cell body becomes larger with more endoplasmatic reticulum and more mitochondria and then you might get also abnormal um, connections between the cell bodies of the inferior olivary nucleus and in the later stadium you can also get glial proliferation. I couldn't find an image of hypertrophic olivary degeneration. So, as an illustration, this is a normal olivary nucleus in a two-month-old girl, where you can see the medullary pyramid anterior. This is the inferior olivary nucleus, which is quite large, as you see. And there are two accessory nuclei, olivary dorsal and medial. The hypertrophy does not become apparent straight away, but it takes a while to develop, as is illustrated in this case from 2013 neurology in a patient with multiple cavernomas, one in the superior cerebellar peduncle, and he had a hemorrhage in it, 
And on the initial MRI, the right inferior olivary nucleus looked normal. And after six months, he developed the hypertrophic olivary degeneration with clinically a palatal tremor. So thanks for watching and until next time when we will look at a disease entity with glutamate.